So as we begin life science, we need to know exactly what it is that makes something living or involves life. So as we look at the things around us, we group them into two categories. One category is living things, and living things is going to include things that are also dead. Um, so living or once living. And then non-living things will only include things that have never been living. So things like soil or water or air or rocks or light. This lesson is going to focus on the living things or once living things. So the dead stuff. Things that those items have six specific characteristics that allow us to know that um, they are living. And so the first thing that we look at to know if something is living is how it's organized. Uh, living things are all organized by having cells. Some of them are unicellular, meaning they have one cell, and some of them are multicellular, meaning that they have more than one cell. Uh, multicellular organisms, those cells then are further organized into tissues groups of them are lumped into tissues which have specific jobs and then those tissues are further organized into organs like maybe your heart or your stomach and then those organs are organized into systems like your circulatory system that your heart would be in or your digestive system that your stomach might be in and all of the systems are then organized into an organism so multicellular organisms have many levels of organization, but the basic level is again a cell that has a specific job to do in that organism. And unicellular organisms are a single cell that again can achieve a specific task or job. The second characteristic is the organism's ability to grow or develop and develop. Um, growing is going to mean that it is increasing in cell size and or cell number. So if I am a uni unicellular organism, then I'm only going to increase in size and I will just get larger until my cell tells me that it is time to divide into a new cell. If it's a multicellular organism, then it's going to grow in number. Um, for example, you need to get taller by increasing the number of bone cells and muscle cells and skin cells that you have so that your legs can get longer and your body can get taller. To develop is a little bit different and so develop means that the cells that are in that organism have specific specialized functions. So for a unicellular organism this doesn't apply because a unicellular organism only has one cell that has to do all of its or all of the organism's jobs. But in multicellular organisms, those cells become more specialized and have specific tasks and jobs as the organism gets older. For example, a human is going to go from being cell, a single group of cells, and as those cells divide and mature, they're going to develop into things like bone or blood cells or skin cells that have specific jobs such as providing structure or delivering oxygen or uh, protecting the organism's body from external environment. And so developing means that it's going to, that those cells will get specific jobs as the organism matures. To reproduce is our third characteristic that um, all living things need to have. And reproducing means that the organism is going to simply make more of that same organism. And this is true for unicellular or multicellular organisms. So if I'm a unicellular organism, I'm simply going to divide into two cells and eventually those two cells will divide into four cells and so on. But ultimately making more cells of the same species like this bacteria here. Other organisms are going to need more than one of that organism in order to reproduce, such as an uh, um, apple tree. It's going to need more than one apple tree in order to use the pollen and the flower to create 
apple seeds, which are then going to grow into new apple trees, and that cycle will keep going. Or you might have other organisms that need to, in order to create new babies, like this baby penguin. But ultimately, they end up with more penguins or more apple trees or more of whatever species they're trying to reproduce. Another characteristic that all living things have is the ability to respond to stimuli. So a stimulus is a change in an organism's environment that causes a response. Uh, these lions would be responding to the stimulus that they're thirsty. And so the feeling of thirst is caused by a lack of water in their body. And their body sends a signal and says, hey, I'm thirsty. You should go get some water. And then these lions go, okay, I will. And they get some water and they drink. So the stimulus was that feeling of thirst and their response was to go get the water and give the water to their body, which it needed. That might be more similar to a response that a human may have to a stimulus, but plants also have some pretty incredible responses to stimulus as well. This is just one example here where a plant is going to conserve energy and the stimulus in this case is going to be the amount of sunlight available to it. So plants use sunlight in order to create energy. And when the plant has enough sunlight, it will make energy for itself in order to grow bigger and make more cells. When there's not enough sunlight, however, the plant will store the energy that it was making and start to lose its leaves, which is why we end up seeing the color in the fall is because the green parts are starting to disappear and die off until the next year. And so the plant then loses its leaves during the winter months when there's less sunlight and lives on the stored energy that it has and it doesn't grow, it just hangs out and lives on the stored energy until there's enough sunlight available. And then when there's enough sunlight available again, the tree will grow new leaves and start to create more energy. So the stimulus in this case was the amount of sunlight and the response was the loss of leaves by the tree. The fifth characteristic is that all things are able to maintain homeostasis. Homeostasis is uh, probably a new vocabulary word for you. And that means that it's an organism's ability to maintain or keep a steady internal body temperature or conditions when the outside conditions are changing. Uh, the example that I have here involves your body temperature, but it could also be um, body health, such as remaining sick or free from, from illnesses. Uh, in this example, it's body temperature. So your body needs to stay at 98.6 degrees. And if you're exercising or working out, your body wants to keep itself at 98.6 degrees, but you heat up because you're working out. And so your body then sweats to release body heat. And that helps to maintain your body at 98.6 degrees. On the other side, your body, if you go outside and it's cold out, it will actually shiver to create heat. So instead of allowing your body temperature to drop, your muscles will shiver, which creates heat for your body to stay warm. Um, although it says there are limits, it can only get so hot and so cold before your body can no longer maintain homeostasis. And we'll go through some more examples of that in class. And the last thing that all living things have to have in order to be considered living is that they need energy. And in order for organisms to get energy, they have four common things that they require for them to be able to produce their energy. So all living things need a food source. They need some way to get energy into their body. It might be in the form of something they consume or something that they make um, from sunlight. They also need a water source. It's going to differ from organism to organism. Some need a lot of water and some need just a little bit of water, but they need water that they take into their body or their cells in order to survive. 
The third thing that they need is a living space. This living space needs to be large enough for them to get all of the things that they need. So it needs to provide shelter, it needs to provide protection, it needs to be large enough for it to find enough food. If that living space starts to become overpopulated, then the amount of food available to that or those organisms are going to decrease and it's not going to um, be able to survive as well. So that living space needs to be um, good in a variety of ways. And then the last thing that is a common need for all living things to create energy is that they need to get some sort of a, I'm going to call it other materials, but it would, it's usually some type of a gas that's going to allow it to create energy for itself. People or humans and other animals need oxygen in order to breathe and create energy. Plants need carbon dioxide in order to do their process that creates energy. And then there's some other organisms that create energy by using things like methane. So no matter what organism you are, you have to have all six of these characteristics in order to be considered living. If you have just some of them, and then you would not be considered living. You would be considered non-living.